So having done documentaries where you learn something every day of your life, you're feeding in information um, and knowing more than anybody in the world about some particular kind of topic, I really decided that when I went into features, I would, whenever possible, choose a subject I could learn from. Um, being from a um, uh, mixed Orthodox and conservative, very fundamental Jewish old country background, um, Poland and Russia, um, I was steeped in religion, but none of it had anything to do with the devil. There is no, there is no devil. That's one thing <laughs> that Jewish people are not afraid of. Good and evil, yes. And as you know, as as good and evil is the subject of just about every drama you will see, if you even scratch the surface, you know, from Greek tragedy to Grimm's fairy tales. Um, the subject of good and evil did interest me, and I thought, well, I've never read a Bible. Really sat down and looked at a Bible, and um, there therein comes the learning component. Um, and I got got hooked on um, on the mythology, on the characters, on the credibility of these preposterous stories, um, because you know because the tone was such that it was. And then the, the trick was, you know, how to what, what do you do? I don't believe in that character with two horns and blah blah blah. So I started reading Bibles, many many different versions of Bibles. And a lot of interpretive texts. I even, you know, made up some verse that people think was from the Bible when the Jews return to Zion and a comet fills the sky. <laughs> when the Holy Roman Empire rises, you and I shall die. Um, and it was, you know, finally the book of Revelation had everything I needed. And my research was mirrored in the character of the played by David Warner, the journalist, you know, sussing out what this means, what that means, the Holy Roman Empire is the, you know, the common market and blah, blah, blah. Right. And, um, and then I hit upon the three sixes. And it was in the book of Revelation. Finally, Revelation had everything I wanted. It was about the apocalypse. It was about the end of the world. It was about the final confrontation between Christ and the Antichrist, the good and the evil, into which humanity would fall, mm -hmm. basically, a pit of fire. Um, so, and then I saw the three sixes. That he hath understanding, reckon the number of the beast, the beast being the Antichrist. I had already, I had already realized I was going to write about the son of the devil, the Antichrist, because, uh, one of the interpretive texts interpreted the sea of, uh, that he would rise, the beast would rise from the eternal sea, which was interpreted as the roiling sea of revolution. Political turmoil. So, uh -huh. The devil's child comes to a political family. How? Why? In framing the battle between good and evil, I looked at, you know, Jekyll and Hyde. There's the battle going on inside of one person, which is what God and the devil is about anyway, the battle inside of us all. And um, I just got the idea, and I don't really know how, to put the heart of darkness in the package of an innocent child. And that's what made the damn thing work, finally, is that it was all about an innocent villain. And those people who followed and did the sequels, I'm not interested ever in doing sequels of anything I do. Um, I'm, I, I mean, I've, I've avoided the thing that makes people rich, and that is branding themselves. Um, I did only one horror movie, and, uh, well, I did another one, which was not so originally good. But at any rate, then the three sixes, which I I turned into two things. I turned it into a birthmark and a calendar date uh, uh, when when the Antichrist was born. It was in the movie. It was June 6, 6, 6 at 6 a.m. We released the movie in 1976, June 6th. So the three sixes, the three sixes were, were, were playing a big part of it. The movie was originally called Birthmark. Uh, and our first shoot was in a maternity ward. It was where Gregory Peck saw Damien for the first time and switched babies. Um, and it was an actual maternity ward and they had signs, people please, if you can, don't make noise 
when the when the buzzer goes off because we are filming birth mom. <laughs> in a maternity ward, the women who were having babies there started wanting out of the hospital. You know, the word birthmark was all over the place. And in explaining, an assistant cameraman explaining to the one of the women, why is it called birthmark? Well, because these three sixes. Well, what are the three sixes? And the guy said, the three sixes are an omen. And that's where the damn title came from. The assistant cameraman said, and everybody heard it. Ah, let's put up signs. We are shooting the omen. Um, so that's how all that. And, of course, not two weeks ago, um, I went to, I, I rehabilitate wild animals and I went to a, a pet store to get some rabbit food and they were having an argument with the cash register. The woman's, the woman's charge she had already signed before she saw was $66.06. She did not want a receipt that had three sixes. <laughs> so I, in my mask, in my gray hair, said, Excuse me, I can settle this for you. I wanted to assure it was no big deal that I actually had written that damn thing and popularized the three sixes so she needn't worry about blah, blah, blah. They look at me and say, oh, you wrote the only one, right? <laughs> hey, yes, yeah, I did. Uh-huh. The guy kept yeah, said, and I guess you wrote the Bible too, huh? <laughs> and then, okay, can you direct me to the, to the bunny food, please? <laughs> Well, they thought I was some old crackpot. And, and, you know, it was, it was really fun and funny. But, you know, those sixes are on people's biceps and on walls, and Ronald Reagan had to change his address. And I take a very secret pleasure in knowing that I put that nonsense out there. Yeah. <laughs> that is your indelible contribution to popular American culture, yeah. <laughs> for it sure. Is, it is. It is. <laughs> 